as I'm going to work on my storyboard, what I want to think about is the kinds of shots that I will include. Now, we define those shots as close-ups, medium shots, long shots, extreme close-ups. We might even have cutaways if we want to focus on something. So as I look at the script here, she is looking at their phone, scrolling through Instagram. So maybe I would do a cutaway to the hand scrolling on the phone or then alternate that between a close-up or extreme close-up on Shia so that we see the face reaction happening to it. So I have to start thinking about what I want to include in frame. Now, we define our shots with framing designation. So extreme close-up would show part of the head or part of the face typically or maybe part of a hand or a foot or whatever we're choosing to focus on. Close up is generally going to be shoulders up Then we have medium close up, medium shot, waist up. Long shot will be whole body, extreme long shot or establishing shot so that we can now capture or document a whole scene. So as we think about these different shots each kind of shot is going to impart different information to the viewer. It's going to give them information about the character, about the story, about the emotions or thoughts that a character is experiencing. So we need to think about what kind of framing will best serve our story. So as I go back into my script, I look at this and will start mentally planning out the kinds of shots that I want. So as I see Brooks moving in on Shia but gets straight armed, well at that point maybe we want to be more of a two shot. So we're seeing both characters, so that would be our designation for what we're doing, so we can see the action happening. Or it could be done from an over the shoulder, so the camera is looking over the shoulder of Brooks moving in on Shia, so then we go from an over-the-shoulder shot, and then we would go to a close-up here where Shia says, no, please, and then we would switch our camera angle and focus on Brooks saying, what's wrong, and then maybe go back to a two-shot as Shia responds, or maybe an extreme close-up, so we're focusing on the face so we're really hammering where nothing is happening right now so that it's capturing that emotion. So we need to start thinking about what shot do we want and when do we want it and what's it going to do? How is it going to benefit us as it reveals character, it advances the action or the story, or it helps to establish our location or setting. Those are really three things. Location, character, and story. Those are the three things that every shot should be evaluated for is how is it doing one or more of those items. So each shot as you compose it in your storyboard you will think about location, character, action. And then you're deciding what you're focusing on with that shot. We don't just include random images because that's gratuitous and frankly it's in some ways insulting to your viewers because you're just putting stuff out there because you want to, not because it's serving purpose. So you're kind of wasting their time. So character, location, action. Every shot that you plan out in your storyboard should do one of those three things. After completing our script in Caltex, what we need to do is export it into a form that will be usable in other programs. So printing it or downloading as a PDF, well that makes it easy to share across email, Dropbox, and things like that, doesn't allow us to retain the formatting information that we need if we want to bring it into other programs. Instead, we can export the script into the open source script format, which is called Fountain. So it's a document format, has a .fountain extension on it, 
and it then retains the information so it knows that this would be a scene heading, this is action, that's character, that's dialogue. So it will know all of that information when we export it as a fountain file. So I'm going to take that file and I'm going to then open it in Storyboarder. Working in Storyboarder, I'm going to create a new storyboard and base it on my script, which has been exported in the dot fountain format. So I will click on create new storyboard and I have two options. I could create a blank storyboard and just start drawing the panels and work with that. The other option is I can select a script and then I can go and choose the script that I've downloaded. So here's the script. We see that it is in a dot fountain format and I can click open. And now it tells me it's added scene IDs based on what was in that script. You can choose the format. I want to choose 16 by 9 as my ratio and it loads it up. And now I am in Storyboarder. Storyboarder is an amazing program. So we can do a lot of really impressive things in Storyboarder. Storyboarder has full drawing tools available to us so we can draw on the panels in our storyboard. We can use any of the different drawing tools as we work with them. So I can grab a pencil, I can grab a marker, I can shade, so we can see if I want to you know, draw a person. So we have a lot of options to us. We can mark things up. Each one of these different tools has kind of a different purpose and our drawing technically on separate layers within it, so it is separating each of these out, which is pretty impressive when we work. If you are using a, uh, I just want to get back to a different tool, a uh, drawing tablet, it also is pressure sensitive. So if you are skilled like a comic book artist, so you can do accurate drawings of characters and scenes, and render all of those out and do it so you are the next Todd McFarlane or Jack Kirby or Michael Turner or Frank Miller. If you have killer skills, the drawing tools in here are amazing and allow you to do great things. You will notice there's a little icon up here in the corner, PS. That's Photoshop, and you can actually then click on that and it will launch Photoshop and allow you to then add Photoshop's drawing capabilities to your artwork as well. But most people have not put in the time to develop their skills and practice at being able to draw accurate figures in space, constructing environments, working on all kinds of different angles of and points of view. So that makes it hard to convey the information that we need because ultimately the storyboard is about giving the information to the, um, actually be faster to erase it like this. It's about giving information to the end uh, cinematographer and director so that they know what the shot should be. So if we are building a storyboard and if I decide that this is a person and this is another person and we draw some parts on it, that's not going to be a very useful thing. I mean, yeah, maybe I could you know, put a little face here and then people will put a face here, and that kind of means both people are facing the camera, which is not usually how we set up a scene. We don't have both people facing forward if they're talking to each other, so that's not going to be 
great way of doing it. So let's try again. So if I can draw a square, a circle, a triangle, and a line, I can pretty much come up with a shorthand version of, okay, so I'm deciding one person will be there and another person will be here in the distance. So I have now drawn circles. Now I can draw my rectangle representing the body, okay, a little bit better. You can draw a line indicating the center of the face, the line indicating the center of the face. Now here, if this person is looking at them, well, I could just do part of a circle to indicate, hey, that's an ear. If we want a little bit more information on it. So we're like, oh yeah, that's an ear. And usually from this view, maybe we'll see part of someone's nose. Now these aren't anatomically correct people. It's not a great way, but it does start to show me the angular view that the camera is taking. Now, if I want to move to the next panel in my scene and work with these same characters, I can create a new board and do that. I can press N on the keyboard. I can click the plus down here. It's all good. But maybe there's a better way, especially if drawing is not your thing. So we can think about working with this and trying to find out how else can we do it? Now, our script has been imported. You can see action. I can see dialogue. To get these to populate on the side column over here for this, I can just simply double click on it and it will insert it into it. Now, I can't put two lines of dialogue in it. So realistically, for each line of dialogue for that I have, I will have a separate board. And that makes sense because that helps us to keep track of in this shot, what are we trying to reveal? Remember, character, location, story. So each one of our boards should be doing one of those three things. So when I go back to my script, it starts out, Brooks and she are sitting at a pub table in the bar area. Stools at the bar are full of people. Nearby tables have people talking and drinking. She is looking at the phone, scrolling through Instagram. So I have really kind of two ways I could approach this that would make sense. Either start with a long shot that shows me the whole scene, or I can start with a close-up on one of the characters. And in this case, it would probably make sense I could start out with Shia, then I could move to another shot where then I go long or even kind of medium long and then go back in on a character's face as the dialogue starts, maybe then focus on showing Brooks. So I can start thinking through my process of how do I want to represent this scene. But as I said, maybe there's a better way to do that and what that's going to be is shot generator. To launch shot generator, I just simply click in this little window right here, and now we can see it opened it up. So shot generator is kind of like a separate program, and you'll notice it starts out, it's giving me an aerial view, and it tells me I have a camera right here showing me my scene. I don't have anything else in the scene yet, but I can add those. And this is where it's going to become really impressive, because what I can do with shot generator is I can set up my scene, I can set up multiple cameras to represent the different primary shots I'm going to be working with in my scene so I don't have to keep moving a camera around. I can just keep toggling between which camera's point of view I want, generate a new board with that, and start to advance my story. So it's a really impressive tool. So I'm going to add in a character and we can see now added in a character. And that's good. Now, if I look here, we'll see that we even have options for, well, I'll go back to the character. So we have, it's a fully rigged character, so I can move the character around. I can click on a body part and move that body part. Click on a different body part. I can move that. So we have all the way down to being able to control it with the fingers, the tilt of the head, 
the bend in all the limbs. But what's nicer is I can even go and find poses to work with. So I'm going to go find a pose and I want to find a pose of the character sitting and use that as my starting point. Well, probably not cross-legged because I've written the script that they're sitting in a bar. So as we look through those, there's some nice dynamic action and falling and other poses. I don't really care about that. Looks like maybe back at the beginning was one that I could use as my starting point because we're not doing a full-on action movie. You can see we have a lot of different expressions happening here. Oh, this petrified hit backwards might be kind of fun for pulling away um, and instead of scrolling through everything, let's see. So we have sitting in a chair, tied to a chair, no. Working at a desk, that might actually work. Uh, sitting relaxed, there we go. Sitting tired. Sitting, smoking, I something. Oh, they're in a bar. They could be smoking. That could work. Now, if we go back to the character, so we can see here's the character. I can move them in relation to the camera. I can move the camera in and out, so we can see how that affects it. Now, if you look in the camera settings, we'll see that I also have options. I can rotate that camera to change its relation to them. So if I want the camera to be over here, I can do that. Now I can even grab this leg if I want that. Well, don't want to rotate on that axis. Um, and pull that leg down. And now if we add in an object into our scene, oh, hey, look at that character sitting on the object. Now let's go into object and see what it is. Oh look at we have chairs, a bar chair. Okay so now I have the bar chair for my character so now if I move the scene around I can see there they are. So if I want it to be a bar chair I can do that but maybe not a bar chair but I think because they're sitting at a table. I'll just go for a chair with the back. So now I need to adjust my character. In this case, this is Brooks. I'm going to pull it down. Whoa, a little too fast. Pull it down on the Z. Now, if I take the camera, put it over here, you can see how I may want to push the character back in the chair a little bit. And I'm going to pull the camera here and rotate the camera so I can better see my character as they're sitting in the chair and what I don't want is for the character to break through the chair so now this leg here probably pull that down and if I go on my list go back to the chair if I want to rotate the chair a little bit so you can see how I can rotate the chair for my character alright so if you've never done any 3D work, you may realize that this is a pretty powerful kind of tool because now I can set it up. And so Y will be the vertical of, or Z is the vertical of my camera. So if I want to pull this camera up a little bit, setting 
the eye level for it. So now I have a camera pointing at my character here, but I can just as easily add now a second camera. Now this camera I can set over here. Let's rotate this one. So now I could have a camera. So I can toggle between these two cameras as I create my shot. And now it looks like I want to take that chair and slide that chair over just a little bit. Right. Now, we're not trying to create 100% perfection. We're not using this as our ultimate finished scene, but we're, we're using this as a guide because I'm looking at the framing in my shot. So what kind of framing do I have? Where's the character's head in relation to the top and sides of the screen? How much of the person do I see? It's a medium shot. I'm seeing from waist up at this point. If I were to adjust the camera over here and then raise it up. So we need to, oh, Z. I do that a lot where I will choose the wrong so we can see and we're able to get a camera in relation to the character in relation to our scene. So I can set up multiple characters multiple. Now I have another character here. Now this is going to be Shia. I want to bring Shia in. Let's go and set her pose right now. We'll choose sitting. Not riding a military seat. Sitting and reading a book. It's probably going to be useful for us. Switch back to this camera and take a look. Hey, look at that. We could even go and put a phone in the hand if we really want to or care. Now what I want to do is add in another chair. So this is going to be chair. And then that chair we will set across we need to rotate it so they're facing each other oh. rotate on Z and now we can see how we have two chairs and my character the character now we need to change its Z position and start pulling it down. Don't want to disappear into the seat per se. So I'm setting up my scene here with my two characters. And because it's in full 3D, I, as I move this, I really get a sense of that space. And why this is useful is because when you're going to be working with this and using these storyboard panels, to actually shoot your scene, you now understand how you need to set it up. How much space are you going to need? How close does the camera have to be to the people based on the types of lenses that you're choosing? Because when you choose a camera, you do have our field of view and we can choose our field of view whether it's a wide angle or a narrow field of view based on the kinder type of lens that we are working with. So if I were to decide that I wanted to instead change my camera lens, so I'm at a 50, I'm at an 85, I'm at 100, 120. So we can see how each of those, and it shows me that field of view, the cone that is happening here as I am changing that lens. So what kind of field of view are we working with? Do we have something that's more like a GoPro so it's really wide angle? Do we have 
something that's more of a standard portrait style lens like a 50 so we can see it's narrower in its capturing do we have where it's an 85 you can see that field of view becomes increasingly narrow and that determines how close or far away we have to be from our subject the wider field of view means the camera will be much closer the narrower field of view such as an 85 50 and 85 these are really common lenses that we would choose so if I set this up in my shots it's going to really help me with planning what I need to do when I'm on set when I'm on location and trying to shoot so I've now put this thinking into it ahead of time so I'm thinking about how do I need to do it what do I need to show so this is now I think becoming you know I'm getting kind of set up for my establishing shot now do I need to say oh I'm at a bar and there's all these people around them do I need to put all those tables and people around them in my storyboard eh, maybe if I'm motivated but probably not the key thing in the storyboard are our primary constituents the people who are part of the story the main characters the main elements that we need to show that's what needs to be there when we put it in the storyboard so I'm going to add one more object to my scene and this object let's go and choose I want it to be a small table you can see we have doors as our objects or railings there's windows so if all those things are important as you are trying to figure out how you want it hey there's my table that I want perfect so if you need those set pieces you want to construct some walls or other things around your characters because that's going to help you establish your scene then by all means do that now I'm going to just pull this camera back out so I can see how my scene is starting to come together so we can see she is looking pretty good around the table um, but I want to push Brooks in at the table and then I think we need to so we can see how I can use this to establish so maybe I want to do an establishing shot this way both characters though we might want to adjust that arm a little bit so the hand isn't in the table now if I grab control point I can kind of move things so I could put a drink on the table or do something but those individual props aren't really that critical when it comes to determining what we're looking for in the scene we're more concerned about the main composition where are the characters how much of them do we see so do I push in a little bit so what is my staging what what am I revealing so spaces behind a character probably not as interesting they're open to the space over here so maybe this is going to be my opening shot so I have a two shot I have my two characters in scene one is looking at the phone the other is sitting there while well, it's said smoking but I could put it switch it and find a drink and put a cup in the hand I mean again I can manipulate individual fingers if I'm so inclined I'm not going to worry about that just yet so this is going to be my two shot if I look at this camera this gives me another angle for that now what I can do is I can add in can add in yet one more camera this is going to be camera three here oh, that was camera one couldn't tell which was which okay so camera three I'm going to rotate camera three and I'm just going to keep rotating camera three I want camera three to really be 
my close up for this character so I can use that. So I'll raise it up a little bit so it's going to be again my close up and we'll push it in. All right, let's pull it down just a hair. Okay, so there's my close up on Shia. And now I'm going to add in one more camera, and this camera is going to be my close up. And rotate it. This will be my close up for Brooks. And the reason I'm doing this is it allows me to very quickly and easily move between cameras and between shots. So I want, let's see, over here I have my camera, so I have that shot and this shot here. You can see shot one, camera two, camera three, camera four. So we now have different cameras to choose from. So I'm going to start out with camera one as my shot. Now what I can do, because I, I have a blank board, if we remember back here, there's a blank board for my first part. So I will choose save to board. And now if I look here, it's saved it to the board. Now for my next shot, so for this first shot, I'm going to double click on this action. And if I look here, it inserted the action in. And the reason we want to put action or dialogue in for each one of our boards is when we export the storyboard, it will then provide that information with it. So we have context as to what is that shot we're looking at? Why are we looking at it? What is it about? So we have the first shot happening there. And the next line is going to be, Brooks is going to be saying, give me a kiss. We'll probably want to focus on Brooks, maybe a medium shot, and change the arms of Brooks as Brooks uh, will turn the head and do that. So what I can do is I can go back to Shot Generator. I can get my mouse working here for a moment. Nope, no, that's my script. Go back into Storyboarder. All right, well, I can just go here is Shot Generator. Go, click on that. All right. So I clicked on Shot Generator. So now what I can think about is I want to go to a different camera angle. Maybe if I go to camera one, and I'm going to then now have Brooks So let's see, as we now are changing the pose around, so we've got kind of a dancing action going on here. So now let's take the head, rotate so the face is there, and Rotate the hand open. And I want to take the camera and I'm going to just push it in a little bit tighter so we're really focused on character. Point that digit back a little bit. So you can spend a lot of time on the hands and uh, we also do have some options that we can apply to the character. So if our character is going to have glasses or other such stuff, here we go. That's what I want. Hand though. Let's go, go flat spread for the hands. Open some up. All right. 
So I'm, I'm going to say that's good enough for my next board. So I will choose, instead of save to board, insert as new board. And now it kind of flashed like you took a picture. And now we can see in our script here, I have my first board and my second board here. This time I'm going to double click on dialog and it puts the dialog in. And so we'll have the dialog and now I'm going to have the next board where I'm going to make Brooks lean in and we will try and capture that as well. So I can click back on Shot Generator. And now in Shot Generator here, as we go to set this up, we can decide do we want camera one or camera three. Go with camera one here. Uh, got some undoing to do there because we started to get a little twisty with it. So we do have to, you have to watch as you do your movements. It will sometimes try to pull things apart. And it can be necessary to switch which view you are in, which camera, as you try to relocate. Oh, no, a little bit of movement is going to be okay there, but what I was trying to do is to bring the arm forward. And now we We can see how we're able to have some control with it. And now I want that the head is going to be more upright. So now switching back to camera one, we can see how we're leaning forward. And going back into the script, we're going to have that it leans in but is getting stiff arm. So what I need to do is now modify our character. And I'm going to move the camera over just a little bit for the framing so we can see some of the action that's going to happen. We'll need to pull the head up. Uh, probably, well, that's kind of painful. Didn't mean to go quite that far. We're no longer reading. And we'll want to Pull that around. So to adjust this, I need to change my view a little bit. And I'll rotate the hand over. the hand up. So now the hand says stop. Alright, let's see if we can get a rotate on that hand. That one's kind of broken there a little bit. Actually the whole arm looks a little broken, which is kind of amusing since we started with the uh, 
superimposed hand. So they have both hands. So we're getting a, a, the double no. So now let's go here, no. And I want to also just turn the head. So now it's looking more at, at uh, Brooks. And let's see, we're on camera three. So I'm going to adjust camera three and do a little rotation on it. And then reposition. So we're really starting to get the kind of shot that I want. All right, so insert that as a new board. And we can see we're looking. Brooks, give me a kiss. And now this is moves in. So give me a kiss. And this will be moves in and gets. So we're going to use this action here. And I will then add some dialogue for it. No, please. Now we're going to work on focusing on Brooks. What's wrong is our next shot. So now I want to return to camera four. And with camera four, we're going to adjust it a little bit. Change the location, pull it out. We'll pull it down. Well, not quite that far. I don't want to go through the table. And I want to just put a little movement in the head. And I'm going to back out because I, I want to now adjust the arm as well. So that the arm will show up in frame. So now when I go back here, we can see that I don't want to actually having the stiff arm up there isn't half bad. So maybe let's go back to this camera and grab that arm. And I want to rotate that arm out. So it can hopefully show up a little bit. Oh, no, I don't want the thumb. I want the whole hand. So now we have the hands of the characters responding. I could even take Brooks's do that, but I'll just go with this for now and say insert as new board. And this would be no please. Brooks, what's wrong? So all of this is really cool because I can just keep building my scene as I go. But what's even better about using shot generator is that if I want to go back to my first shot I can go to this shot, and now when I click on Shot Generator, it loads that original shot with the cameras where they were, with the characters where they were, so it remembers all of that information. So now if I want to tweak something a little bit, because it's currently using Camera 3 as our default camera, if I wanted to, well, let's just push it in a little bit more because I like a little tighter framing on my characters, done. Now instead of insert as new board, save to board. And that updates it. So the best part about shot generator is I'm not stuck with this and going, oh crap, I have to redraw the whole thing. How am I going to do that? And well, that's a lot of work. 
So let's add one more board in here. So right now we get Brooks what's wrong. Now it's gonna we'll focus on Shia for our next one. So go back to shot generator and I want to be focused on Shia and this time I want I want my head down a little bit. I'm gonna take the arm, pull that back down. We'll and pull this one down and I need to switch to this view because I want to oh that's the arm okay when it's moving while I do that that's actually kind of amusing so I'm trying to adjust some of these positions to just add a little bit more emotion in on my character because I'm working with nothing just not now okay all right let's go back into shot generator and I was using right, I want to tilt the head a little bit this way and I like having it where it's a little bit over the shoulder. So we see some of bro well last track. Lost control there. Now if I lose control of trying to just drag with the mouse, I can adjust with my numerical controls over here I can always do a little bit of rotation but I kinda like that because we still have the hand from before we have the character here I like this so I'll insert that as a new board let's go back over here and this um, so what's wrong and now this is going to be Shia nothing just not now okay so we've now created our scene with our characters and what's useful about this is I can really focus on what am I portraying with the character how much of a person do I see where is their head am I doing a medium shot close up extreme close up and I have all my information that I need with it so we could continue and do the rest of the script but that's what I'm going to stop with for now and when it's done, what we can do is choose print or export to PDF. When I do that, it comes up with this, and I'm going to change it so that, as you can see, I've, it does four on a page, or maybe I want to do three columns in one row. Yeah. The two isn't bad. The two by two. That seems to be pretty good for this particular scene. So we can see this is the first page, this is the next, because I only have my six panels done. What we don't want to do is we don't want to choose something like, oh, I'm going to put six across. or six columns and then there's these tiny little things that we can't really see what's going on so it's better to have your panels a little bit bigger so that we can see it and also then there's enough room to read the text notice it put the action notes under it it put the dialogue that went with it so we've got everything there which is pretty awesome now I mean, the other option is we could switch it to a portrait layout and then if we choose a portrait layout we could even do one column and three rows so if you like your pages vertical you could do that or two it's up to you the that's not bad if we want to be able to see a little bit more but the two by two landscape is a pretty good option on it that I like
But if all your documents are vertical and your OCD gets troubled by having something horizontal, well then make it vertical and that's fine. And then when it's done, I'll choose export as PDF. And now it's exported that as a PDF. Now one thing that Storyboarder does is when it creates your project, and this is really, really important, when it creates the project and puts it into a folder, we have the settings, then we have the scene, and each scene, so if you have multiple scenes in your script, each scene will be in its own folder. And then each scene will export as a separate PDF. So that is one thing that I'm not, it doesn't always fit with the workflows that we use, but the people who made the program, it must fit with their workflow. Then we have our storyboarder file. We have images, exports, and here is where that PDF lives. We can see how it's now been exported out, which is considering I didn't have to draw things, I didn't have to work on my perspective, I didn't have to do a lot of other stuff. I could just pose characters. That's pretty awesome for creating our thing. But if you want to move this from one computer to another computer or share it with somebody else so they can open the Storyboarder file, one, you both have to be in the same version of Storyboarder. If someone tries to open a Storyboarder project using an older version of the program than the version that was used to create the file, then the panels will show up empty. So there's compatibility issues. So if everybody is always keeping up to the most current version, then that works out really well. If you want to move this around, you need to take the entire folder that you're working on and right click and compress it. Or on Windows, you would choose send to compressed archive and that would create the zip file. And the zip file is what is now portable from machine to machine. If you only grab the storyboarder file, you won't have any of your images. It's not going to have the shot generator information and it will be incomplete. It's also important that if you've used a script with your project that you keep that script with the folder or even put it into the folder so it can find it. I just should have done that before I made the zip. Good luck and have fun.